I'm Jeannie C, and I'm here to talk to you about how schizophrenia is diagnosed. There's no lab test or uh, radiological x-ray test um, for schizophrenia. Um, the way we diagnose this is uh, using a clinical interview and also um, uh, information from other people that, that uh, might, might know a person uh, to know whether they have the symptoms and signs of schizophrenia. Um, so uh, there are, you know, psychological tests that sort of um, tell you about uh, your general personality structure and whether you might have um, a risk for psychotic symptoms, but they are also not uh, definitive ways of diagnosing schizophrenia. It's really that interview that, um, uh, that uh, it comes from as well as uh, the person's history. And so um, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, um, which is uh, the compendium in psychiatry that tells us all the symptoms and criteria for different um, disorders, talks about schizophrenia. And uh, it recently changed over actually from DSM-4 uh, to DSM-5 um, in uh, May of this year of, of 2013. And uh, um, it, the criteria are largely the same. Um, uh, what, what's changed is that you know, some of the subtypes um, have been eliminated because they didn't hold, uh, hold true in, in the research. And so the symptoms of schizophrenia, um, basically the, um, the main symptoms fall into um, five different areas and you need two or more of these to, to qualify. Um, so uh, the, the uh, first one is delusions. So having fixed false beliefs that are not consistent with your uh, culture um, and, and uh, that other people don't uh, hold um, is one symptom area. And so uh, having uh, uh, paranoid delusions where you feel that other people are out to get you or plotting against you, that's um, a, a paranoid delusion. Having um, a grandiose delusion, which is um, like you feel that uh, you're uh, more important than you, uh, than, than you really are, like you're a world leader or you have a mission to accomplish, those are um, delusions. There are also uh, nihilistic delusions where people uh, feel like a part of them is dead or they're all dead. Um, or um, some interesting ones that you know uh, I used to remember as being the X-Files uh, delusions where uh, the cap grass delusions, uh, we call them, are where you feel like um, someone you know has been replaced by, um, by someone else. Um, so those are different types of delusions. Hallucinations are um, uh, experiences of uh, where you uh, perceive something that other people aren't perceiving. Um, so hearing voices that aren't there and sometimes you might hear commands to do things um, or uh, seeing things that aren't there. Um, uh, those are those are hallucinations. Disorganized thought and disorganized uh, behavior. So um, in, in terms of disorganized thought, sometimes people with schizophrenia um, uh, cannot sort of get to, from point A to B when they're talking. It kind of weaves all over the place or uh, uh, actually just goes from thought to thought without making sense. Um, Dis disorganized behavior is um, generally very poor self-care, but in, in, a, in an inability to organize activities. And so sometimes in the you know, worst cases, um, uh, you know, sometimes you see people um, who in the middle of summer are dressed in eight layers of clothing and uh, a winter parka, and um, that's a disorganization of behavior and an inability to respond to the environment and, and, and what is needed. So those are the first four symptom categories. The fifth is um, negative symptoms. And so um, uh, these include uh, anhedonia, which is a lack of interest or pleasure in things, um, avolition, which is a lack of motivation, flat affect, um, uh, so uh, there's not uh, uh, much display of uh, emotion, sadness or happiness, and um, uh, elogia, which is uh, uh, just not a lot of thoughts um, coming through um, in their mind. Those are, those are some of the symptoms of, uh, the negative symptoms of schizophrenia. So we look for these symptoms, and as well, um, we, look, uh, we look for them to occur over a one month period, um, at least a one month period. And then um, we look also at uh, whether there is at least six months of what we call a prodrome or a de deteriorated, deterioration of functioning um, so that uh, uh, someone who um, you know maybe was going to school and doing quite well um, suddenly um, starts to not be able to study, um, is not taking care of their hygiene, um, is not sleeping, and that sort of decline is necessary to make the diagnosis as well. We also have to rule out that um, this, uh, this change in behavior and thinking is due to a substance use or is um, primarily due to substance use because substance use can trigger it as well, or that it's primarily due to a medical condition. Um, you know, many things can mimic schizophrenia, like uh, like lupus, like brain tumors, um, 
So uh, we have to rule those things out and do medical tests to rule those things out. Um, uh, and then uh, we, can, we can make the diagnosis. Um, sometimes schizophrenia can be confused with other disorders like bipolar disorder or depression. Um, so uh, we have to do a careful clinical interview to make sure that this is schizophrenia and not something else. Thank you.